One, two, three, team. It's your boy D Neil back with another reaction video, guys. Here we are with the USA loves to meddle in other countries. We are gonna break this down into two parts. For the first part, we're gonna go ahead and get started. But before we do, make sure you subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell, get a video a thumbs up so it gets suggested. If you guys got a video suggestion, you can subscribe to Patreon and drop it in the comment section. What do we got? There's a weapon that powerful countries use to get rid of leaders they don't like, leaders from other countries. It's called a coup. It's a French word that means a punch or a blow because it kind of means coming in and forcibly punching out a government from power. No elections, no process, just power being seized. Just someone being pushed out and someone being put in. Coups happen in so many different ways, but I want to show you how the coup has been used by the United States of America as a tool to get what they want on the world stage. So let me walk you through some of the major US-led coups over the years to show you that while it sometimes seems like we live in a world full of order and rules, the reality is that the most powerful countries will often get their way by whatever means necessary. Oh my god. A century of coups. Okay, so here's how I'm defining the US-led coups that I'm gonna put on our list here. Number okay. one, they were successful. There's a lot of failed coup attempts. We're leaving those out. Number two, there must be at least one US government official involved in the coup. Okay. And number three, we need concrete evidence that the US was actually involved, not just speculation. While the US has been involved in tons of regime change efforts around the world, we landed on a much shorter list. These are the coups oh. that I think best exemplify how how this tool God, has been used dang. for international power over the years. Jeez. Let's start here. In the Aloha. independent country of Hawaii. It's 1893 and the U.S. is feeling like the Hawaii... I thought Hawaii was a part of the U.S. Hawaiian Queen is a threat to American control over sugar. It's sugar mm. that's being grown by the descendants of white American missionaries who had settled in Hawaii over the years. So the U.S. sends a military ship with hundreds of troops to show up to Honolulu, and they overthrow the queen, installing wow. one of those descendants of the Christian missionaries, Sanford B. Dole, as the new president. Notice his last name? Yeah, this coup was one of the U.S.'s first, and it set the stage not only for the new Hawaiian president's family to grow their powerful international corporation, which was based in Hawaii, but wow. also for Hawaii to be annexed, to become a part of the United States. I made a whole video on this coup because it's pretty wild and there's so much going on here and it was really a turning point in showing how the U.S. could remove leaders from power in faraway places, something that they start to do a lot more of. We're going to move on to the next coup, but- We stole Hawaii? I thought, I don't know why I thought Hawaii just was part of the states for, from when, from the jump. The U.S. stole Hawaii. That's crazy. I need to thank today's sponsor who makes these videos possible. Thank you NordVPN for sponsoring today's sponsor. video. I've started using NordVPN for a lot of different things. When I'm traveling, I connect to the internet via the United States so that all of my accounts plus Johnny Harris. For a limited time, you will get a free into the map. I gotta get out of here because things are about to heat up. We got a lot more to cover on these coups. The next coup has to do with Spain. Well, actually more like Spain's colonies. Spain's glory days have come and gone. They are a declining empire and there is major <clears throat> resistance in their colonies, especially in Cuba, Puerto Rico, and the Philippines. Meanwhile, the US is a rising empire and they already are pretty uncomfortable with Spain having colonies like 100 miles off their coast. But at the same time, they don't love the idea of true independence for places like Cuba or Puerto Rico. These are strategic islands right in the U.S.'s neighborhood. And like Hawaii, American that. companies have money invested, particularly in Cuba. Independence might mean them getting kicked out. So the U.S. delves into this fight between Spain and their colonies. They use the explosion of an American Navy ship as their excuse, even though it was likely an accident, not an attack. But sometimes stories matter more than truth. 
So the U.S. sends in troops to liberate the rebels fighting against their Spanish colonizers, promising them independence, not only in Cuba and Puerto Rico, but later over here in the Philippines and Guam. These what? local uprisings eventually drive out the Spanish. And in all of these cases, the U.S. reneges on their promise to give independence to these locals. And they figure out ways wow. to govern Cuba and Puerto Rico indirectly themselves. The U.S. has just piggybacked off several independence movements to enact several coups at once, allowing them to install pro-American leaders and a navy base in Cuba, and eventually annexing Puerto Rico and Guam, which they still control, and the Philippines, which they held for 48 years. Again, I made a whole video about this one too if you want to go deeper. Anyway, we gotta move a little quicker here because we're not gonna get through all these coups. Let's move on. Okay, so we're over here in Nicaragua. Nah, bro, the U.S. And I, I don't know why I'm shocked. I don't know why I'm surprised. I know that they be doing these coups. It's just... I don't know. It, 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 it just baffles me, but at the same time, it doesn't baffle me, if that makes sense in a way. That's crazy. It's 1909. There's a bunch of powerful American companies here, but a new president comes to power vowing to regulate them. The U.S. is not going to let this happen. So the Secretary of State starts spreading rumors to smear this guy, this president, saying that he's building a canal that would compete with the Panama Canal. But really, they're just upset because Nicaragua is taking loans from Europe. The U.S. keeps painting this guy as a war criminal and someone worthy of being thrown out. So push comes to shove, and the U.S. sends ships to both of Nicaragua's coasts. They assemble a bunch of Marines in Panama, basically just flexing on Nicaragua and telling the president to step down. And the benefit wow. of being a rising superpower is that it worked. He has no choice but to step down. And soon, a leader that the U.S. likes comes to power. The coup is complete, and That's really, this is the crazy. first of many instances of the U.S. meddling in Nicaragua. That's a few years crazy. later, the U.S. is back in the region for another coup in next-door Honduras. This one was plotted by a band of private American citizens, and it follows a similar pattern. A new president comes to town, in this case directly inspired by Nicaragua's president, and he wants to take back control of the country from American businesses. In this case, we're talking about bananas. The banana companies were not going to let this happen. And it was mostly this guy, a banana businessman named Sam the Banana Man. He's not going to let this pesky president run his country, no. So he assembles his own militia, he literally buys a surplus navy ship, loads it up with weapons, and starts his campaign to get this president out. He sails from New Orleans to the coast of Honduras, and he literally invades the country with, like, a private army. Wait, what, where's the U.S. government in all this? They also didn't like the political direction of Honduras either, so they just sort of stood back. Let this private invasion happen. And then, at the critical moment, the U.S. steps in to order a ceasefire, basically bullying the president to step down. He had no way forward, no defense, wow. so he resigns. And the banana man's leader of choice takes the presidency, giving the banana businessman land and a unique status to import anything he needs tax-free. And, wait of for course. it, he refunds him for all of the coup expenses using public Honduran money. What? The banana man literally overthrew the government and made Honduras pay for it. Wow. <laughs> he overthrew the government. It made them pay for it. Nah, bro. The U.S. as a rising nation is wild, bro. It's wild. But it just shows, like... And I'm not saying it's a good thing at all, but in this world, it seems like whoever has the most money is in charge. They have the most power. Not the presidents, not not all of that. It's, it's the businessmen with the most money that's... That's where the power's coming from. The government and made Honduras pay for it. Wow. Okay, so let's move forward to the 50s, where the coup becomes a more useful tool in the American toolkit. There's this new U.S. agency dedicated to collecting and analyzing information from all over the world, meaning for spying. They call it the Central Intelligence Agency, the CIA, and it completely revolutionizes the art of the coup. Oh, and at this point, the U.S. is now a full-blown global superpower, no longer just looking in their own neighborhood, but rather at the whole world map, investing huge resources into fighting their global rival and its communist ideology. Got you. So this gets us to Iran, 1953 where Iran had just elected a new star politician, Mohammad Mossadegh, 
He rises to power believing that Iran must take back control of its most valuable natural resource, oil, which at the time was completely controlled by a British company called the Anglo-Iranian Oil Company. We know it today as BP. Most of as soon as I hear oil, I know the U.S. got a finger in the pie. They, they got a finger in the pie. Are you threatening to take back your old oil? I know the U.S. is like, nah, we, we want oil from everywhere. I already know they coming in. The deck is done with this. Let's kick the British out and take back our oil. But like the U.S., Britain is not happy with Iranians trying to take back their resources. So they mm. warn that if they do this, there will be consequences. Oh, great. Okay. So the British catch a quick meeting with the CIA's Middle East guy who was passing through London. And they pitch him on this idea. Let's throw out Mossadegh. The CIA is like, okay, and they kind of sniff communist vibes on Mossadegh with this big desire to nationalize Iran's oil, or at least they tell themselves they do. So the CIA agrees, and they secretly send this guy to Iran. He's the Middle East bureau chief, Kermit Roosevelt. He's like in his 30s. Oh, and yes, he is the grandson of another big coup guy, Teddy Roosevelt, who I have Are gone into serious? in other videos. Roosevelt sneaks into Iran and is given a million taxpayer dollars to use, quote, in any way that would bring about the fall of Mossadegh. So now there's American CIA agents oh in Iran Lord. secretly trying to overthrow the government. And it's a rocky start at first with a bunch of failures. But they start using their money to get traction, bribing politicians, religious clerics, and other leaders to say divisive and controversial things about Mossadegh. They hire locals to stage attacks against religious leaders, making it look like they had been ordered to do so by Mossadegh. But really, wow. they were just getting paid by the CIA to do this. And with enough time and money, they create an atmosphere of chaos and hostility and distrust among the public. Oh, and there's weapons. The CIA stashes enough weapons and explosives to support a, quote, 10,000-man guerrilla organization oh, for six wow. months. Like, just in case they need to, like, start a full-on conflict. The result of all of this is more violence and chaos that engulfs the capital. Shops are being destroyed, bullets are flying into mosques, people are beaten, and thousands of paid demonstrators flood the street. The city falls into anarchy, all of it orchestrated by CIA money. And in That's the end, crazy. this all results in a bloody shootout at Mossadegh's house. He eventually gives up and turns himself in. He's put through a sham trial and found guilty of treason and sentenced to three years in solitary confinement and wow. then house arrest, where he stayed until his death. The previous ruler of Iran, Mohammad Reza Shah, which just means king, had fled the country. But now, with the democratically elected Mossadegh gone, and with the backing of the US and UK, he could charter a flight back into Iran and take control. Wow! In a tradition which goes back 25 centuries, his title is King of Kings, and he becomes Emperor of his nation. The U.S. really came out on top here. They got what they want. This is absolutely insane. It seemed like the U.K. called the shots. No, well, not called the shots, but the kind of did call the shots. You know what I'm saying? They basically said, hey, they trying to take back that oil. We don't like this. Hey, U.S., CIA, let's take them down. Y'all we, we, get some of this oil, too. Let's knock them out. And the CIA was like, all right, cool, cool, we down with it. You know what I'm saying? Free oil, or not free oil, but oil. <laughs> we always did. You said oil, we always down for that. Uh, but that's it's crazy. It, it's just crazy. Uh, money makes the world go round. As simple as that. It, it's literally as simple as that. And he becomes emperor of his nation. The U.S. really came out on top here. They got what they wanted. They now have an American-friendly dictator in a powerful country in the Middle East, who is now welcoming American oil companies to get in on one of the largest oil reserves on Earth. Of course. Under the Shah, Iran becomes a brutal police state. He executed military officers, student leaders, anyone associated oh with Mossadegh. God. He set up a secret police force, and life was brutal. So brutal that in 1979, the frustration of Iranians burst forth in mass protests that ran the Shah out of office and replaced him with an inspiring new leader who would turn Iran into an Islamic Republic, built in part off a foundation of resentment for the U.S. having meddled in their country. The Islamic Republic has held power ever since and has morphed into the oppressive theocracy we know today, though maybe not for long. Before we go on, a quick reminder that all of these coups, these plans to overthrow leaders in other countries, did not require American votes or consensus or approval of Congress. It was usually just a few key men in government buildings in Washington, D.C. making this happen. 
These people would go on to define the Cold War and shape so many covert operations around the world that many of which we'll never know about. Okay, let's keep going. The next year in Guatemala, the CIA tried to pull the same playbook that they used in Iran, once again targeting a leader that the people had elected, but who wanted to take back the country's resources for the people, to break up these American monopolies that controlled the country's electricity and railroad. The president even starts to seize land from one massive banana company. It was often unused land that he wanted to redistribute to the locals who could farm it and feed their families, and hopefully climb out of the system of endemic poverty in the country. Once again, I made a whole video on this, the geopolitics of bananas in Central America. But the fact is that the U.S. decided that they had to defend the banana companies, or wow. else more communist reforms would spread. So the U.S. President and Secretary of State ordered an overthrow, and the CIA got right to work. The CIA hand selects a leader that they want to be in power. And then they start giving equipment and training to a bunch of, of Guatemalan course. exiles and private soldiers. They set up a secret operation base on the outskirts of Miami. They start delivering weapons to the Panama Canal. But like the other coups, it can't just all be about weapons. They gotta own the information space. So they create a radio station that sounds like it's a local Guatemalan radio station, but really it's being operated out of a small town in Florida. What? They start publishing fake news about an uprising, unrest, a rebellion. And then at the same time, the fighters that the CIA had trained and armed invades Guatemala. Pilots wow. start dropping bombs on fuel tanks and military posts and airports. But they weren't starting a full-on war. They weren't trying to cause real damage. They wanted it to feel like a domestic uprising, like a war was on the horizon, to freak people out. And for That's many, it crazy. totally worked. They thought that this was a real uprising. I bet. They had no idea that the CIA was behind it all. But That's the president insane. knew what was up. He had messed with the USA, and now he's hearing about it. Military leaders in his circle are feeling the pressure from the big bully from the north, and they turn on him, and he eventually surrenders. Wow. On his way out, the president addresses his people, makes it very clear that, quote, the United Fruit Company, in collaboration with the United States, is responsible for what is happening to us. And just like that, one president is out, and the hand-picked CIA option is in. This new uh, regime bro. is brutal and goes on to do horrible things. Detaining people they thought were communists, killing prisoners, breaking up labor unions, and in the process, restoring the banana company's land and ensuring that they maintained their hold on this economy. This kicks off an era in Guatemala of more political assassinations and instability, something that still plagues the country today. And yet to this day, there is no evidence that the Soviets were ever slightly interested in Guatemala. Communism was once again the excuse, but really this was about securing America. American business interests, tearing a country apart for bananas. Bananas taste the best and are the best for you. That is absolutely insane. These countries just want to just want to gain their independence back and not be ran by other countries and not have the United States influence or any other influence in their country. They want to take back their own resources. And when that happens, we go and basically destroy the country. We, we take out the leader that the people has chosen and replace them with someone who's going to be beneficial to the United States. That's insane. That's all we got. If you guys got a favorite video suggestion, you can subscribe to Patreon and drop it in the comment section. Subscribe to the channel. Ring notification bell. Get a video a thumbs up so it gets suggested. We'll do part two tomorrow. It's your boy Dinia. Out.